welcome. It is a crying shame that 40% of homeless men are actually veterans. Unlike the rest of the homeless population, most have their high school degree and were honorably discharged from our military. Yet even though they served our country, they are drifting through life with no place to call home. Here to talk about this tragedy is Julio Gutierrez, who coordinates the Homeless Veterans Program for the El Paso Opportunity Center. Welcome, Julio. Thank you very much for yes. having me. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> You're unique in this regard in that you know firsthand about being homeless, isn't that right? Yes, ma'am. I was homeless uh, from the time I was a teenager, uh, finished high school, some college, went back into the military, came back uh, homeless and uh, uh, through uh, college and everything and the help of some shelters here in El Paso, I've been able to succeed. So you were homeless in high school, and when yes. you went to college, you still were homeless? Yes. In, in, in other words, what, you lived in your car, or you didn't yes. have a permanent place to live, and then exactly. you were in the military, yes. and you were, of course, taken care of there, but when you got out of the military, once again, you didn't have a place to call home, you were homeless, and uh, you had a, 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 you were married, right? Yes, ma'am. And then <clears throat> went through a divorce, and once again, yes. I became, yes, I become homeless again, uh, living in my car, looking for work, and uh, after that, uh, uh, I had a period where I worked for various years in, the, uh, in Silicon Valley doing various types of work in electronics, uh, but I still lived in a car because uh, child support, uh, this is, these are problems that most veterans have, uh, child support issues, uh, taxes so, issues. So just managing your life yes, became a difficult thing. very difficult, and the expensive. whole financial thing, even though you were kind of in and out of jobs and stuff, yes. it was that financial management and so you lived in shelters, you lived in your car and that sort of thing? Or no, what did no, you no. Do? Actually I lived in a car in various cars for many years because uh, I did not know anything about shelters. Uh, until I was uh, in the 90s, 96, 97 is when I really learned about shelters. All those years I continued on uh, uh, working, uh, trying to better myself, uh, and uh, that's basically what I did, went and saw my children when I could. And uh, So it's a very transient existence. It is very transient. Yeah. It is uh, no place to go. Uh, you can't afford a place because uh, of these expenses that you have. And uh, it's very difficult to, for people that are homeless to actually establish yourself any place because of the uh, lack of employment, uh, lack of money. Right. Now let's take a moment to <coughs> watch this clip uh, about homeless veterans. I've been homeless now for a little over a year and a half. It's hard. Believe me, it really is. You know, I used to look at people that way. I used to be very judgmental because I didn't understand how they could let themselves get in that situation. You become hopeless and you become helpless. We don't really feel wanted and needed in the community today. You're just trying to actually get out of it, getting the support, what we need, where to get it, how to get it. It's not there. You know, it's, it's, it's not that they're holding it back from us. It's just not there. You know, I'm just trying to do the best I can now. You know, I'm still working on my service-connected disability, which I don't think I'll ever get, but I'm not going to give up. It's, it's, it's rough. We're veterans, you know, and we want to be treated as such. You know, just to survive from a day-to-day -day thing. It ain't right. I, 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 I am a veteran. So we can see from this clip that that the whole issue of homeless veterans actually there are a lot of myths about who they are and what creates this homelessness um, and I think it's it's really a tragedy that most of us are not even aware of. So do most veterans become homeless right after discharge or is it over a period of time? How does that dynamic work? It, it really depends 
um, after you get out of the military, normally you go back to your old environment, your home, your family. But at, after a couple of months, few months, maybe a year after that, uh, they pick up on the drugs and the alcohol or the same behaviors they had before uh, they joined the army. And eventually, because they're older, the family doesn't want them anymore, and therefore they don't support them. At that time, they begin to see this and they move on sometimes or the majority of the time outside of their environment to another city. So they start hitchhiking out to different cities. So it, it, it does happen kind of over a period of time, <coughs> yes. sometimes sooner, sometimes later. But the issues that were they perhaps had before going in the military um, don't go away. And so, and, but yeah. they're now a lot older and so yes parents and family are reluctant to keep supporting them. Um, according to the National Center for the Homeless, 60 percent, uh, actually it's 67 percent, of homeless vets served more than three years. So they're not short timers. They're people who've generally served in the military for a significant period of time. Is, do you find that this is true? And, yes. and how does their military service impact them? You'd think that they would have learned perhaps some discipline, some financial discipline and that kind of thing during the military service. Uh, when you're in the military, you're in the military, you're trained to go to war. Uh, our objective is very focused. War, we train, we, we practice with weapons. Uh, we go out in the field for months sometimes. Then when we return, <clears throat> uh, the family life is uh, uh, it's another story. Uh, f we know that financially we're going to be okay, but uh, but in reality uh, there is a lot of discipline. In, in, uh, but it's mostly focused on on uh, on the uh, mission, which is war. So, because the military is a highly structured environment. Um, it doesn't necessarily, once the guys are out, doesn't, they don't necessarily pick up on that discipline because uh, there's so much freedom and so many choices compared to the lack of freedom and lack of choices. Is yes. that, that right? And yes, once you get out, it's like escape. You know, I don't have to be so disciplined anymore. Mm -hmm. And if, we, if I get out with uh, mental issues, drugs and alcohol issues, and I don't seek help immediately uh, in most veterans do not know where to seek help, and I'm talking about the uh, VA. Uh, so they, they go on uh, just uh, with the same behaviors, uh, which eventually will lead them to, uh, you know, a bad situation. Right. So also, uh, I, from my own perspective, I thought, well, of course, these people are traumatized because they've been in a war and, and uh, that can be a very traumatic experience, but really only 33% of them are actually <clears throat> deployed in a war zone. That's 33% of homeless vets. So that means that two-thirds, in fact, have not been homeless vets, have not been in a war zone situation. So uh, it's, it's and, not just PTSD because right. of war type of thing. And, and before you join the military, my experience, uh, working with veterans the last 14 years is I noticed that a lot of these guys have minor behavioral problems what they call access to uh, problems Ac and uh, access, access to uh, uh, it's there they're like uh, maybe just uh, depression mm -hmm. uh, anxiety but it's not to where they can't function mm -hmm. uh, like PTSD is an access one to where if it's uh, if it's really deep it's, they cannot work, they cannot function, so and therefore disabled. the VA gives them money. Right, disabled. Whereas yeah. when you have an access to type of a psychological problem, you're not going to get any money. And these people need to be retrained uh, to take care of these behavioral problems. That's, that's just if it's a behavioral problem, because if you have a drugs and alcohol problem, you still have to deal with uh, all of these problems. And, uh, and the majority of these guys, that, um, that two-thirds that you're talking about, it's exactly that. They don't have skills because of their behaviors, because of their uh, personality disorders. And uh, that's one thing that people are not really looking into, that we have veterans out there that, yes, they don't have any drugs, alcohol problems, but they do have uh, behavior or personality disorders that stops them from being uh, as productive get, uh, and, uh, and getting jobs. Yeah, And it's hard once you've been in an environment like the military where 
everything is taken care of. It's very structured. There's a lot of cohesion. Your yes. social group is there automatically. You have, you know, your superiors watching out for you and that yes. kind of thing. Kind of, you know, okay, the next day you're completely free making all these decisions and you have to put your life completely Behold, back together. together. Yeah. Yes. It, it is a very difficult thing. It is. Um, many of the, the homeless veterans also, 46% <clears throat> of homeless vets are age 45 and older compared to the non-veteran population um, which is about 20% are, are, yeah, are yes. older. So we, the homeless vets are generally an older population. Why is that? Yes, because we've had that World War I, World War II, uh, Vietnam, Bosnia, and now um, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. And uh, the majority of uh, those populations are Vietnam. I'm sorry, I forgot one is the uh, post-Vietnam um, era, which is about 10 years from uh, May 7, 75, to 1990, mm -hmm. that's another generation that did join the army and didn't go to war. Uh, it's the Cold War era, uh, and uh, we have a lot of those guys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who come to the VA, they, they get taken care of. Uh, then we have the Vietnam era veterans, and then we have still some Korea era veterans. So these these various era veterans, they just seem to stay in this homeless, helpless condition? Or is it that have they been this way their whole time? Or is it that now that they're older, they're more vulnerable, and so they become homeless? Which one is it? Do you have well, an idea about uh, that? They become unstable because they're older. Uh, they don't have the skills required now to find jobs. Uh, so would, maybe they're laid off. Kind they're of laid thing. off. Uh, they, they don't know how to go learn a computer, how to do certain things. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, we live in a generation uh, that, you know, at one time there was no computers. We worked at a place for many years and now you, ha you lose your job and now you have to go to a job that requires more skills. Uh, and by that time we already lost the, Ameri the uh, GI uh, bill that pays for school. So we have no way of uh, uh, Putting, well, there's ways of putting people to school with with, with that. But it's it's a little harder because. But it's they, harder because they're older. They're old, and yes. so it, it, there are more challenges because they're older. So what we do, the VA does have what they call a non. If if you're a war era veteran, you can get what they call a non-service connected pension, which I've been using quite a bit, especially if you're homeless, you can get it sooner, and uh, and uh, these programs have helped a great a, a lot of people older veterans. Right. Uh, and then the last thing which you have referred to before is that 76% of homeless veterans experience alcohol, drug, or mental illness problems. So the vast majority of homeless vets do have problems in these areas, okay? Would you say that, that um, the, ho the homeless vets uh, have more problems in these areas than the average homeless person or that that is very typical of the entire homeless population? No, no, I, I think homeless veterans have that problem more than anybody else because when you're in the military, there's really nothing else to do except to get together with your buddies and go drinking and uh, sometimes they, I, they do it a lot, uh, more than the, what we call the norm. And so when you get out, if that's only been the only escape and behavior that you've had and you, 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 you uh, practice more, when you get out, you're gonna practice the same thing. It's a matter of behavior, it's a matter of uh, uh, responsibility. And, uh, and uh, when you are a, or you just came out of a war, uh, you don't really, really don't care about anything except for having fun and escaping. Right, and kind of dealing with um, all of that issue emotionally and psychologically as well as just getting you know freed from a very restricting environment yes. yeah yes and so yeah. um so so do you think that if they have drug or alcohol problems or they have a propensity to have drug or alcohol problems that it it can be made worse by their military service and i don't mean that the military service intentionally does that but do right. you think that that may be the case to a certain extent where people think oh i've got problems so if i go in the military i'm going to get fixed is that not no. really the case no no uh it's really a again back to behavior it's a behavior problem it's a discipline uh, pro, uh problem uh 
most of the veterans that come out, uh, they uh, go through a period in which they have to readjust in civilian, uh, with the civilian population so they can function. At this time, if they don't have the proper help or guidance, uh, it can become, it can go bad. It can go south to where these guys are just going to do drugs and alcohol and they're going to continue life at that mm -hmm. level. A great percentage of those people that get out do come out. They go through that same uh, change uh, and uh, do go to college, do use the uh, GI and post 9-11 uh, uh, monies that, that so are there, there for them. there are certainly positive outcomes that can Very come much. From, the, from the military, but a particular group is vulnerable yes, there. Yes, a particular group is vulnerable. And uh, in, in the 14 years that I've been doing this, I, I see uh, very few changes. Unfortunately, when we get them in a homeless shelter, they've already been uh, through all kinds of problems, uh, legal problems, financial problems, marital problems. And, uh, and it's very, very important that when we at the homeless shelters, the caseworkers get these guys, we channel them properly because that channeling will really signify how they're going to behave the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. So you really are about helping them to turn around their lives. Most definitely, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being an ex-homeless veteran, uh, uh, most of the problems they have, I've had, but the difference is that at that time when I was homeless, I didn't know anything about VA benefits or VA anything. Right. So I make sure that by, by the time they leave my office and I take them to the VA and register them and I introduce them to uh, whatever programs there are, that they know, I make sure that they know that they can do without me. Mm -hmm. And that to me, that's very, very important. Right. They can function and know what to do for the rest of their lives with that help that can the VA does provide. Right. What was the turning point for you when, you when you went from drifting through life and being homeless to having a sense of direction in your life? Well, you know, uh, it's funny. Back in 75, I was a senior in college, and I did not have good guidance my, my last semester at, uh, at school. And because of that, I, I traveled a lot because I was an athlete. And, uh, and then uh, I would come back to the United States and, uh, and uh, I would still be homeless, come back from Moscow or come back from uh, one of these world championships, Pan American kind of Games. What athlete were you? I was a wrestler. I used to oh, wrestle. Oh, okay. Uh, and I wrestled uh, for uh, Peninsula Grapplers in San Francisco. Okay, all right. And, uh, and so, uh, I would come back right. and be homeless in a car. Oh my gosh. You know, and that uh, is uh, amazing. Uh, it, it is, uh, it is. And then uh, I see, it, I'm not the only one. I, I know a lot of track and field stars you know that do the same thing they come back to the united states they because they didn't win a medal or something we come back to our car our we don't usually come back well we can well i never came back to my family because i didn't have any family but they do come back to their families but once they just want to be athletes and uh, and they're not producing with financially <laughs> the family doesn't want them right so so there was a turning point there what, well, what, was what happened was is that uh i after a few years of being here, being there, one day I uh, working here, there, and not finishing everything. My kids, uh, I would think about my children uh, growing up with uh, my ex-wife, and uh, I want them to be proud of me. So one day I just decided to go back to school. I quit everything, and this is when I first came to a shelter. I finished uh, my bachelor's in a homeless shelter in San Francisco. Really? Yes, and, and I know that's the reason why I know anybody can do it, and we have a lot of people presently that have finished something while they're in a transitional living center or a homeless shelter. How long do people usually stay uh, at the Opportunity Center? Is that, well, it's that kind depends. of a dorm situation? Well, if he's a veteran or she's a veteran, in the last year or maybe six months, they don't have to be there at all. But in the past, veterans would have to just stay at the Rescue Mission, Salvation Army, or Opportunity Center until we actually got him some money or place him someplace where uh, so they, they have to stay it. what do you mean by have to they have because there's no place to go unless they sleep so outside. they're not required to be there it's that it's the only place they can be that's correct. okay I see that's correct so they can live there for how long well it depends the Opportunity Center where I work has that uh, option that you can remain there until you're ready to go so as long as it takes for you to get back on your yes. feet yes yes uh, do, do people 
want to stay there or do they want to get back on their feet? What's, I mean, are you creating kind of a dependency scenario where it they is, never want to leave? Do you have to kick the baby, out, a bird out of the nest kind of? Again, I go back to mental health. The great majority of people that stay in shelters such as the Opportunity Center is because they have health or mental health or physical issues right. to where we get them in Social Security. It takes about 120 days if they get denied they have no other place to stay for another 120 days. Right. So that's, you know, so pretty soon it's very difficult to live in a homeless shelter because you sleep on, uh, we sleep on mats over there. Uh, so it's not luxury. <laughs> no, ma'am, that is not luxury at all. Uh -huh. No, so, you know. So, so it's not a place that you'd want to be if you didn't have to be there. It is not a place where you want to be because uh, you have certain populations that have <clears throat> an interest uh, such as maybe they want to sell you drugs, uh, maybe they want to uh, use you for something. We have a predators that will take advantage of the elderly. Uh, How do you deal with that? We deal with that because we have a staff uh, that we communicate. Mm -hmm. We know who's doing what because they will tell us. The, it's, yeah, the, the, the clients themselves, you know, hey Julio, this guy's doing this or, or they'll tell another staff member. When we have meetings, we bring that up because we don't necessarily believe anybody if they just tell us one time. We need to get that same info from various people, various case workers to where we have something concrete and uh, actually ask the person to leave. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how we deal with yeah. it. So yeah. you, it, that's got to be very difficult to monitor the behavior because there are a lot of people who, who have some dysfunctional yes ways yes. of coping and you've got all yes. these people together yes. Yes. who are dysfunctional. Yes. I mean, uh, the, yeah. the Opportunity Center houses uh, quite a few people there. I think it's about 110 during the summer and about 160 to 180 during the winter. Mm -hmm. So when you have that many people in a place, That's you a can imagine people. what the staff has to go through to deal with, uh, with these yeah. people. And, uh, and uh, so the only people the staff have is uh, the case workers and the only people we have as case workers is the staff. Yeah, right. So we communicate with right. each other and try to deal with it the best we can. Right. Um, only 25% of the homeless veteran population actually seek services. Why is that? Because again, uh, like me, uh, when I got out of the military, I didn't know I had any benefits until I actually came to the Opportunity Center and stayed there. Uh, they had a veterans program and I didn't know I qualified for medical. I was already, that was only about 14 years ago and I'm 60. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. So you can imagine. Right. Uh, so and that is similar to all of us. Uh, as soon as we get a, get out of the military, we want to escape, get out. I don't want to hear all this about no weapons, no cleaning this, no doing that. Uh, we just want to get out. So what is, your, what is your biggest sorrow? Well, the fact that I didn't finish school mm -hmm. back in 75 that I had really bad counseling, and that's one of the reasons why I make sure that, again, uh, when I talk to somebody, uh, a client, he or she knows that she can do positive things the rest of their, their lives, because I spent so many years in my car. And I, if I had had good counseling, uh, I would be, uh, I would have a PhD, I think, you know, uh, you know. Have, have taken a much less painful path. <laughs> much, much less because yeah. uh, everybody has potential. Right. And, uh, and uh, you just have to find, uh, you just have to show that person that they have it. They need to understand that they have it and then, and then they take the rest of their life doing the right thing and, and, and that's a positive thing. How big is this problem in El Paso? Is it, is it pretty <clears throat> big here? It's gotten so much smaller. Um, since 2007, the VA has really come up with some great programs, housing programs, emergency shelters for veterans, uh, pensions that are easy to reach, um, things that, uh, uh, that I want to be homeless again, you know, no. because there's so much, you know. Yeah. No, no. Sure. But there's just so much. So, that, so there has been a, a tremendous big decrease. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I mean, just to give you an idea, Every year we have a stand down. I don't know if I told I you. A stand down is, is a, a day uh, in the year where uh, we actually invite all of the homeless in El Paso 
to one place and we issue them all our what we call TA50, all the military clothes, mm -hmm. free new boots, jackets, pants, everything they give us, you know, war clothing, they get it for free. And the reason why we do that is because we know that the cold times are coming around, so yeah. we clothe them in field jackets, boots, so they're not cold because a lot of these guys do sleep outside. Right. Does, does faith play um, an important role in helping these yes. guys to recover? We, we uh, have um, many churches come out and, uh, you know, read the word. Uh, we Do Bible studies. Bible studies. They take people to church. As a matter of fact, my co-worker uh, does that. She uh, she actually gets people from the mm -hmm. from the shelter and takes them into their church. And there's various uh, denominations that do come out, and read it. the Bible, and do that. And do you find that when um, a veteran who has problems comes to faith, that that helps him in the recovery process? Well, well, I, well, I mean, honestly. What yeah, no, no. That? To be honest with you, I don't see that very much mm -hmm. because of all the psychological problems involved at the time they're homeless. When mm -hmm. you're in a homeless shelter, you want to focus only on three things. Transportation, work, and housing. These are the major uh, homeless problems that we have. They're not focusing maybe trying to go to church. Uh, they're not focusing maybe uh, doing stuff that are not important to him or her at that time. Uh, but yeah, but but yeah, a lot of them do go to church and uh, and uh, and you know if they uh, because we do have vans coming out on Sundays and right. take them to the churches and stuff like right. that. But who exactly, as far as veterans go, I haven't seen that many. So well, so what you're saying is is that. For many of them, the psychological issues and the addiction issues and the issues of life are so overwhelming that that um, you know it's very difficult. It's very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for Julio. having me. You've been very thank insightful, very and we really appreciate it. Are you shocked at the plight of so many of our homeless veterans? Would you join with us in praying that God will work with this population and help all those like the Opportunity Center who are ministering to these people in such a powerful way? Tell us what you think about this issue on the social media. Thank you so much for watching.